Hey everybody, it's Matt Powers. I have a question. What happens when we inoculate non-mycorrhizal plants? What happens to the mycorrhizae? That's what we answer in this video. All right, let's dive in. All right. So now here we have that amaranth seedling and you can see its root going out and then you can see these root hairs coming off very clearly and then it comes to the, the, the root tip. And this primary root like wouldn't have all these hairs all over it if there wasn't microbes participating in rhizophagy and being endophytes and producing the nitric oxide that, that actually is driving the formation of root hair. So you need microbes to actually have root hairs form. So we know there's microbes here we inoculated it with our bacillar mycorrhizal fungi, as well as plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. So if we look here, we can see that there are areas where there's light. It looks like there might be a, have been fungal activity, but if we just go a little bit closer, we can see that it's superficial. It's all on the surface. And so the rhizobacteria, the beneficial endophytic rhizobacteria got in and started doing its work. That's why there's all that glut of root hairs there. But while the exudates did for a time feed the fungi, you can tell from the crystals. And so they started feeding on that and started doing their work with their digestive enzymes. They didn't persist they didn't they weren't able to go inside of the root and maybe there's some spores i didn't see any but but it shows that if you have a polyculture then the inoculation can persist for a while and if you have living soil these things can likely travel but it also shows that doing a mycorrhizal inoculant on a non-mycorrhizal plant does nothing in terms of actually helping that plant but the rhizobacteria does great so we can use rhizobacteria to stimulate root hair growth and stimulate rapid growth and endophytic feeding in the leaves and in the roots of non-mycorrhizal plants but unless it's like brassica and it's trichoderma opening the door for our muscular mycorrhizal fungi. And we haven't found any more of those special keys for amaranth, for example, yet. But this shows us what happens. It persists for a time, it digests for a time, and then either, you know, forms spores, and I, and I, I didn't see any on there, or it just senesces and becomes food for the next layer in the, in, in the succession. Thank you for watching. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And check out the Kickstarter for regenerative soil microscopy. You will be able to diagnose roots. You'll be able to look at things and immediately understand what needs to happen. You may have noticed that there were new lighting techniques happening throughout the course of this little video. And uh, that's because, yes, there's new techniques, there's new methods, and there's new ways to visualize things that are way more accurate, way more color correct and, and true to what things actually look like. So click on the link, help us spread the word and join us because this is, this is it. This is going to change all of our understanding of soil, all of the practice of soil, and thus change all the food because we're connecting the bricks, the bionutrient, the plant sap analysis to the soil, to the DNA, to the microscope examinations and evaluations. It is going to be a deeper understanding that we've never had the opportunity of connecting in real time with open, transparent data that everyone can participate in, that everyone can see. This is the future. Thank you so much. Click the link, share it with the folks that you know love soil and love compost. I'm Matt Powers. I will see you later. All right, have a great one.